right then, Trev, let's kick things off. We've fed a little, a good amount of pellets with the main cup, and we're just going to keep topping up now with a small ball of micro pellets in that pole mounted cup, okay? okay. So if you ship that out nice and smoothly. That's it, nicely done. And just remember what I said about the pole coming off the roller. There you go, perfect. And if you remember, we've lined up with the end corner of, the of that island there. So what I do first is get to the end of the pole to the correct distance. And then you want to drop that bit of pellet ball into the peg. So turn the pole around, give it a bit of a tap. There you go. And now you want to actually lower the rig in. So lower the rig in nice and slowly, so you're naturally allowing the pellet to go down and settle just on the bottom, because we're fishing at dead depth. So what we're looking for is any little, there you go, straight away Trev, fantastic. It's a small bite and you lifted absolutely perfectly. Nicely done. So you're shipping back to your top kit, nice and smoothly. And what have we got? A little tench. A little tench. Hey, nicely done, Trev. That seemed to work well. Did, didn't it? <laughs> first pole, first pole fish caught. Nice one. That's a good reason for using a barbless hook. What, when you catch it in the net? <laughs> yeah. Right, let's have another go. So we'll load up with a bit, another consignment of the uh, micro pellets. And what you're using, the six mil hook I'm or pellet? I'm using a six mil hook and uh, just letting the point come out as you uh, advise, James. Hook it up. So the best process now, you've hooked up your hook bait, just swing that out swing that to out. get it out of the way of everything. And you've got to come back. We'll put another little ball of micro pellets in and repeat the process. Seems like a bit of a faff, but it's just the best way to feed the peg nice and gradually and build it up. That's it. Nicely done. I mean, obviously, when you've done it a few more times, Trev, you'll find that you can speed up the process. Yeah. But what you're doing is absolutely spot on. So, so I'm at the top drop end. your pellet in. We're lined up. Yeah. There you go. And then lower your rig in so you get the optimum presentation. And the way you're holding the pole there, Trev, is absolutely spot on. Your knee, your leg here is supporting the bulk of the pole and you're able to control the pole and strike very efficiently. And that strike is just a gentle lift, isn't it, Trev? Yeah. You're not striking too hard because you've got such a short length of line between the pole and the float. There's no need for a, a strong strike. It's more of a lift, really. I mean, even with just like the first put in, you're so much in control yeah. of what's happening. You're doing that really nicely. And one thing I'd say, Trev, is just every so often, just lift the float out, maybe four or five centimetres out the water, and then lower it back in again. And what that's doing is it's just bringing your pellet off the bottom and then enticingly falling back down. And so many times you do that and you get a bite straight away. Bit of an indication there, yeah. and actually, you did the right thing because it didn't take the float under, did it? I mean, we've got that float dotted down to perfection, so it's so sensitive. That might have been a fish just rubbing against the line or just mouthing the bait. But the great thing is, you were able to get straight back in again, and you're fishing in the same spot, aren't you? 
That's okay, you still got the pellet on. Nicely done. Imagine trying to do this with a rod and line. Whoa. That was a good bite, wasn't it? And one thing you did then, Trev, you tend, you're tending to strike to the side. Yeah, as opposed to lifting. Yeah, you want to lift. Yeah. It's, it's the most efficient way of doing it. If you're striking to the side, you're having to strike through the float to get to the fish. So if you can try and next time, if we get a bite, just lift directly up. That was a good strike. I think we'll give it another go, and if we don't hit a bite, we should try a, a smaller hook bait. Try a smaller pellet. Yeah, yeah. we should try a four mil pellet. Hey, you remember it? Yeah, out, look Trev, out. Yeah. This looks like a better fish, mate. Yeah, it feels like that's a better it. fish. That's it. Keep the pole tip down in the water like you do, and that's absolutely yeah. perfect. And just gently ship it back. And every so often, if you just lift the tip up and have just a look, to see where the fishes yeah. go. Oh, oh. what? Never mind, mate. Let's have another go. Let's I'm sure we'll get go. another. Nice one, Trev. Yeah. That looks like a better fish. Feels a little bit better. I don't think it's that big, but... We'll do it. I reckon it might be a tench. Yeah, I don't think it's a carp. That's it, the elastic's yeah. doing all the work, just towing it out. Hey, it's hey, a barbel! <laughs> Didn't oh, expect that. A, well, that's the first, that is. <laughs> hey, this, this pole fishing light's great, isn't it? First barbel on the, first barbel on the pole and the first barbel out of the still water ever. Well, that's amazing. Great, a great way to finish up, I think. Nice one, Trev. Well, James, might not be the biggest barbel, but I'm really pleased with that. Thanks ever so much for showing me. I came here as a pole novice. I'm still a novice, but I've got the basics now. Fantastic. Thank you. No problem, Trev. Glad you oh. enjoyed it. Put him back. Hey, now I'm hooked on pole fishing. <laughs>